We continue our career overview of one of the funniest men around, Adam Sandler. Exclusively known as a funny man, Adam caught the industry off guard in 2002 with an acclaimed dramatic performance in Paul Thomas Anderson's Punch Drunk Love. Adam was landed on the moon, <laughs> you know. It was a totally new experience for him, I think. And he just jumped in there, he got straight in, he took his clothes off and got dirty, you know. And he's gone to a place that inside that's quite dark and quite, you know, he's revealed something of that kind of inner demons that we all have. But Sandler decided against exploring this side of his career further, going straight back to comedy. Launching his own company, Happy Madison Productions, Adam went on to star in Anger Management with Jack Nicholson, Fifty First Dates alongside Drew Barrymore, and Click opposite Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> uh, yeah. If I uh, knew how to fix a car, I would have. That's what I would have done. I'm just uh, like I've always been kind of. Uh, drifting into my own worlds my whole life and coming up with silly scenarios for my friends and that's why I ended up doing what I do and that's I think that's all I can do. By now Adam realized what a strange position he occupied in Hollywood. On the one hand he made movies that were financially successful but at the same time his work was getting increasingly poor reviews. I'm just happy that I get to continue living this uh, you know, I, I get to make movies. They didn't take that away from me yet. Uh, I've, I've, I've had a good. A typical example of these conflicting results came with 2008's Bedtime Stories. I'm getting laid off. But you're like the, the classic school principal. You're scary and you're bad with people. And I, I, that came out wrong. I'm just, what else can you do? Playing a hotel handyman whose life changes when the bedtime stories he tells his niece and nephew begin to magically come true, Adam's co-stars included Courtney Cox and a guinea pig called Bugsy. Wow! Are those eyeballs or bowling balls? Let's put them back in the air, uh, okay? Bugsy wanted higher billing than Sandler. <laughs> Bugsy thought he deserved higher billing. I think, Bug Bugsy, I think Bugsy's trying to renegotiate the a sequel contract now. The bad reviews, however, steadily got worse and worse, with scathing reactions for grown-ups. Just go with it, and that's my boy. Three, two, one, stop that! <laughs> In 2012, though, the negativity reached a whole new level at the Golden Raspberry Awards, where the event seemingly declared war on his movie Jack and Jill. Where were you? I've been waiting forever! I, I has creeping me out here! I, I, I could have been kidnapped or something! Starring as both a long-suffering brother and his nightmare sister who visits for Thanksgiving, Jack and Jill broke the record for the most amount of Razzies won by a single film, including worst screenplay, worst picture, and worst actor for Sandler himself. Whoa! 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 Okay, I'm ready, let's go! Oh! Oh my god! Nevertheless, Adam carries on regardless. Shut up! And it seemingly hasn't affected his power in Hollywood, or the fact that many young comedy stars still see him as a king of the genre. There's scenes that are so crazy and heightened, and he can take it all the way into, you know, crazy land, and then when it's time for the more realistic stuff, I really learned how to, like, ease way off and let it feel very natural. <laughs> In 2013, Adam got back on his horse for Grown Ups 2, feeling happy to be back at work with some of his closest friends. Currently working on a new comedy called Blended hitting cinemas in 2014, Adam Sandler has now been in the business for over 25 years, starring in 35 movies with a career gross of $3.8 billion. And that's something his many detractors can't argue with. In this week's box office countdown, a brand new number one. But we start with number five, Red 2, with Helen Mirren reprising her role as a secret agent. MI6 has just given me a contract to kill you. Apparently you're number one on Interpol's Most Wanted. What did you say? It's important to enjoy life while you still can. Martha Stewart was my inspiration in Red 1. Um, Someone who is just really good at what she does. I can absolutely see Martha Stewart as being a secret agent somewhere or other. Oh, 
Put your hands in the air. And wave them like you just don't care. Say ho. Last week's number two has dropped two spots down to four. It's Grown Ups 2. Stay. Don't you growl at me. Stay baby, stay. Kids don't belong in here. That leash better not trip me up. It's your man feet that are gonna trip you up. <laughs> <laughs> she was just joking around, sir. The animated adventure Turbo. Head in the game, head in the game. Can be found in third place. My name is Turbo. I just wanted to go a little faster. Yes! 17 minutes! That's a new record! Well, Turbo's big, big dream is to go fast, you know, and it's the one thing a snail can't do. And, uh, you know, for him, his, uh, his lifelong aspiration is to be, you know, not just the fastest snail in the world, but just the fastest creature in the world. I wish I was fast. Uh, oh, no. What's happening to me? The minions from Despicable Me 2 are still going strong in the box office at number two. I have you now! <laughs> For the Despicable Me 2, we really wanted to look at ways that we could make the minions even a bit more integral to this story, knowing how much people have really reacted to them and love them. So it's kind of an interesting opportunity for us to sort of take the minions and 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 play with their role and what you know how can we show different sides of them, different aspects of them, and again keep them as an important part of the story. <laughs> This week's new number one is the horror The Conjuring, which claims to be based on actual events. Clap. I'm gonna get you now. I can hear you breathing. You took your blindfold off. I win. I was in Christine and Nancy's room. When they first move in, you know, everything's kind of fine and cool, as it always seemed to be. And then, you know, things, things start to develop, and then they slowly start to realize that they've been um, pretty much being haunted by, um, by a bunch of different entities living on this property. Um, but there's one particular one that was really malevolent. Girls, it's way past your bedtime. <laughs> John Kale. Why do you want to be in the Secret Service? I can't think of a more important job than protecting the president. In college, you barely maintained a C average. <laughs> You're not to look at Agent Todd. <laughs> Special Agent Todd keeps making those sounds. I'm gonna start looking at him. Did you get the job? Yeah, I think I got a shot. You know how it is. They gotta go talk amongst themselves. Channing Tatum's character obviously doesn't get the job. But when the White House then goes under siege, he's still there. In the action comedy White House Down, the presidential residence gets attacked by a group of paramilitary invaders. The movie was directed by Roland Emmerich, who previously blew up the White House in his 1996 classic Independence Day. Although this time it doesn't get completely destroyed, the Oval Office still takes a real battering. Everything takes place in one house. Yes, it's a big house, the White House. And then I kind of thought, you know, like kind of just, um, I saw like kind of immediately, you know, the, the fascination of like seeing these beautiful walls, wallpaper, gold leaf, frames, you know, shot to pieces. When my mom visited the set, you know, she was like, she was like, thought it was crazy how you can destroy something so beautiful. This is John Cale. I'm in the White House. They've taken the building and they're holding hostages, including my daughter. Alpha One, do you have the target? Roger that. We're holding the president in the library. That's a library. 
Don't go in there. Just. Oh, this is so stupid. You mean Mr. President? Go, go, go! Let's just call SEAL Team 6 and they come in here to get us. We have a scrambled sat phone in the residence. Great, where's that at? Of course it is. By the way, John Cale. Same story. Channing Tatum's character gets a chance to prove his worth and aid the president, played by Jamie Foxx. When I saw him having to get ready to do the fight scene, I know for him that was like, you need some water? Because that's crazy. Stretching, Stretching forehead. Yeah. Like, it's like, ah. Ah! Can you not hit me in the head with a rocket while I'm trying to drive? You beak up up. <laughs> hit him right here. Jackpot, what you got? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Take that thing that's in your right hand, that's a black shield. Perfect. Get me to the fist, Tail. I know you're into peace and all that. You gotta stick that thing out there and go to work. Damn right. Hold it with two hands, President. There it goes. Tatum is mostly known as a ladies' man in romantic comedies. But with roles in movies like Haywire and the G.I. Joe films, he's also becoming a bit of an action star too. And he definitely appreciates a good fight scene. It makes you feel cool, that's for sure. Because <laughs> when you, generally it's written so you get out all right. <laughs> you, you, end up, you end up somehow like figuring it out. Images of the White House under siege might seem familiar. That's because earlier this year, there was Olympus Has Fallen, which also saw the presidential residence get attacked. Yeah, well, I didn't knew it at the beginning. I, I only knew that there is another project, but I had no director, so I kind of thought, you know, we won't be first. But then on the other hand, you know, we like kind of said, like, we want to do this movie right. We're not like kind of, uh, uh, like kind of, you know, do something too fast. Find out yourself which of the two is better, because White House Down is in cinemas now. Shoot him! No, don't shoot him! Next week in Films and Stars, the big screen return of some blue friends with the Smurfs 2.